I can't believe it! It's upon us! My directed director's latest masterpiece awaits! I'm beside myself with anticipation, Miss Layton. I really am. Arn is this no soap for love film. It's a Roman story, is it? You wanna just work that out? Well, yes, it's a romance, but it's so much more than that, Miss. Actually, you can't pigeonhole actors' work. It transcends genres. Mm. You see, Miss, Rector used to, to direct cult B movies. He had quite a following of Die Hard's fans even then. I think it must have been his attention to detail. I mean, really, he was a complete perfectionist. But he somehow never managed to appeal to Joe Public. I think it's supposed to be the common people, like general people. Then, about 10 years ago, he started to move into more mainstream genres, romance stories and so on. That's when he started to become more popular by appealing to a wider, wider audience. Now he's regarded as one of the greatest directors of our time. His films are always highly anticipated. I must say, I've always thought his films were capital. I've been a huge fan. Even since his cult B, B movie days. My. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. My all time favorite has to be Wallow the Mud Bathing Robot Hippo on a Mother's Post Apocalypse Earth. Hold up! This is this a reference to Wally? The movie, which by the way is a very good movie, I love it, it's one of my favorites. I see. So, she also fell of, fell of Mr. Rector's films, are you, Emiliano? Well, of course. I think he's a fantastic director, but no, I'm more interested in actors in this film. Oh, you mean Leonardo Di Cameo. <laughs> okay, not gonna lie, if Leonardo DiCaprio's name was like this one, it'd be way more funny. The lead? But he is ever so popular with the ladies. Well, he's extremely good looking, and an excellent actor, of course. After all, the action role he plays, I'm dying to see what he's like in a love story. Emiliana, I didn't take you for a lovey-dovey type. How cute! Oh, I, uh, I didn't mean... Mm, I am not lovey-dovey. No, no. Anyway, when you're finished teasing me, look, it seems the VIP guests have arrived. Oh. Looks very well off. Who are they? Uh, you know of them. One of them is the mayor. But also dragons, really. Eh, that again, it makes sense. Because this is England, the story of King Arthur and all that, as well as medieval dragons hoarding treasures and being filthy rich. And these guys are, I think, the richest people in London right now, at least in the story. So it makes sense they would be called the dragons. You are very poorly informed, Catriel. Everyone in London knows who they are. They are known as the Dragons. The Seven Dragons of London. Seven Dragons. Yeah, I'm actually curious. Why is it always seven? I mean, like, there's a seven Chichibukai from One Piece and seven Dragon Balls. Everything is always seven. I don't know why. There are probably other things that I'm not remembering, but always seven. Yes, some of London, London's wealthiest residents, moguls of media, finance, transport. Between them, they really control the city's economy. Although some of them do come in from wealthy families, it's really on, only in the last 10 years that they've become so well known. Oh, not very long then, especially in a historic, historic city like London. I mean, she does have a point. True, and of course, it's not just people here in London watching them. The whole world's eyes are trained on these seven multi-millionaires. Well, they certainly do sound very influential. You know one of them already. Ah yes, Mayor Loanida. I'm supposed to pronounce their name wrong. So she's one of the seven, isn't she? Oh, we must go and say good, good day, Miss Layton. Yes, I think there's still time before the film starts. 
Let's go and say hello. <laughs> okay, I was sure what was gonna happen, but no, no, it's, it's perfect. She's, uh, I completely forgot her name already. Jesus Christ, why am I so bad at this? See, there was always a hit in the light. Oh, interesting. Okay, this boat has to be a reference to the Titanic, right? Okay, that was that kind of neat. <laughs> see, there is always one light, even two this time. Jesus. Now let's see if there is anything else to see here. I don't think there is. Oh wait. Oh no, I forgot to save. No! Oh, there's something caught on these leaves here. What is it? It's a puzzle, miss. Oh, I say, I'd love to see you solve it. Bead brain bleed. Oh, this is not gonna up well for me, is, is it? Here we have a simple child story that consists of five rows of five wooden poles, each of each of on which you have thread colored beads. A little boy was counting the beads on, on, but he's lost count. With a view from above, from from the front and from the right hand side, can you work out how many red beads there are in total? Oh, okay, 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 okay. This is the right hand side, this is the front. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Much, much, much later. I think this is right. This is an interesting one. And that's how it's done. Hey, I got it right. Somehow. You did it. You really need to, to visualize, visualize things in different dimensions to work that puzzle, don't you? Yeah, this one is a bit tricky, I'm not gonna lie. There, I saw that puzzle, showed that puzzle who's boss, boss, didn't I? I must say, it's an unusual place to find one. Perhaps it's here to entertain people while they're waiting for the film, for the film to start. I mean, it would be an interesting idea. I'm so glad I saved there. Good evening, Piper. Catrell, I was expecting to see you here. No, well, in truth, films aren't my thing. I'm here for the popcorn. <laughs> I don't doubt it. I didn't realize you were one of the Seven Dragons of London. Oh, that's really my father's influence. But I don't think of myself as a millionaire. I think of myself as London's mayor, nothing more. And that's a very worthy title. Not everyone has what it takes to be a mirror in a city like this one. Haha, <laughs> you're too kind, Catriel. But it's always nice to receive a compliment. Now then, there's someone I'd like you to introduce you to. Introduce you to. This is a friend of mine, Mr. Mr. Phineas T. Barnon. Phineas? From Phineas and Ferb? You're here? Howdy, it's a real pleasure to meet you. Phineas, I think you gained a bit of weight in your older years. So you're the Catriel Layton I've been hearing about, eh? Ha ha ha. Piper told me all kinds of stories about you. All good, haha. Ha. All good, don't you worry. I've been just dying to meet you. Well, it's an honor to meet you too, Mr. Bar Barnon. You're one of the VIP guests. On the VIP guest list, I presume. Ah, uh, VIP guest list? That's a good one. You'll be seeing I want to take it next. Oh, so in the capacity are you here then? Oh, so in what capacity? I was under the impression you either had to win a ticket or be invited special. Haha, uh, you don't have a clue who I am, do you? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll set you a little puzzle. If you can solve it, I'll fill you in. Four, 
Fortune Teller Fiasco. Interesting name. You decided to visit a fabulous fortune teller, but it turns out you can decide your own fate with a little bit of brain power. If you can sack all cars onto the discard pile, you'll have good luck. The only rule is that you must either follow number or suit when placing a card on a pile. So get stacking and take control of your own destiny. So for example, yes. Okay, so Oh. So it has to be like this, this, this. Oh, this isn't difficult at all. This, 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 and this. Huh. This is an interesting one. Puzzles are made for solving. You did it. The thrilling mists of your future are clear. I see I see a heart card. You're about to find love. Mind you, to be fair, I expected this puzzle to be way more complicated. No, it was like easy. I'm honestly surprised. Pleasantly so. Jesus Christ, so much stuff. <laughs> they told me you were good at puzzles and they were right. Sorry, I wasn't trying to test you or nothing. I really wanted to see from my own eyes. See, I'm a big fan of detective work. Well, I hope it, I didn't disappoint you. On the contrary. So we had a deal, didn't we? Let me tell you all about me. Ha <laughs> I'm the manager of the Save Law, you see. The Save Law being the greatest darn theater in the West End bar now. Ah. I'm the one who's put on the screening. Oh, you mean you own the Save Law? That's right. Now, I hear you blew Pip's little festival plot out of the water. <laughs> I was wondering what kind of goal you were, and now I see. Mighty fine. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show. After all, it's if it thanks, I'll make you money. Won't make any money out of it, really, will, will I? <laughs> well, the truth is, I'm really here for the popcorn, not the film. Ah, the all new durian flavor, you mean? <laughs> I know I came up with that. I know you know I came up with that myself. I mean, to be fair, I heard durians are very tasty. But they smell awful. Did I think it's during the one I'm thinking of? You have to keep thinking of new ideas if you want your customers to keep coming back, right? I mean, he's not wrong. A lot of co uh, a lot of food companies keep coming up with new flavors to keep it interesting. I just I just had Pip try it, and as happens, haha, not her cup of tea at all. I see you're involved in all aspects of the business. How interesting. Well, that popcorn certainly has a unique flavor. Perhaps a little too unique. <laughs> a good example of effort not necessarily producing results. I'll get that for myself, I think. Now, where do you get it? It's on sale at the kiosk back there. Show them your coupon and we'll give you a tub. Oh, look, that's all doubly over at the kiosk there, Madame Dublé. Dub. Oh, Madame Dublé, too. Doubly. You should introduce yourself. Madame Dublé? You should know there are seven dragons? Haha! <laughs> Gretchen Dublé is a name you, you do out to remember, Miss Layton. And a word of advice. Never forget the Madame. <laughs> she controls a whopping great empire of businesses stretching right across the globe. You know? Yeah, she practically breathes money. They used to say that the sun would never set on the British Empire. Well, if that metaphor holds any water at all, Madame Dublé would be the sun. She's a glue that holds us all together. The mother, mother dragon, you could say. <laughs> I see. Well, she certainly sounds larger than life. If you want your detective agents to get any chance of success, it would be wise to move and befriend Madame Dublé, Catriel. Hmm. I suppose detective work does rely on ma maintaining good relations with people, it's true. I could just say hello, which I, while I queue up for my popcorn. While you queue up for your popcorn, you really haven't grasped how important she is, have you? 
And I think that's all I need to do here, right? No. Oh, for the love of... There. Here we are at last, the kiosk. Time to sample the all-new popcorn delight. Oh no. What's the matter? There's no one at the kiosk. I I won't be able to get my popcorn. Never mind, miss. How about introduce yourself to Madame Dublé instead? Ah, so near and yet so far. You must have been down in the mouth, miss. Remember, Mr. Barnon said she could be a very useful contact. Yes, alright, let's say a quick hello then. Um, do you know which lady she is? I suspect the lady over there might be who we were looking for. Yes, I think you might be right. She certainly stands out as being affluent. Lord of the Life isn't wrong, she's Lord in all aspects. Except her legs. They're teeny tiny, Jesus. Oh no, okay, so apparently the popcorn does not like the durian. I think it was supposed to be the lamb, but hey, I got close enough. Discovered a ferocious figurine. It's been added to your collection. I wonder, is that supposed to be a reference to Godzilla? Okay, I know that not every single. Oh god! Jesus! Because again, I know that not every single giant movie monster is supposed to be Godzilla related, but come on! Oh, this one's probably a puzzle, isn't it? I knew it! Oh, I say, miss, a hidden puzzle, look! Well, found, Ernest. Why don't you solve it, seeing as you found it? Me? Oh, uh, um... Well, alright then. I can't very well shy away from a puzzle and still claim to be a worthy assistant of the great detef detective Catriel later, I suppose. <laughs> Go with the flow. Interesting name. Some juice vats are connected up as a sh... Up, oh, up, up as shown. There's a 2 liter, 3 liter, 4 liter and 5 liter vat in the system. When you select a tap, juice flows in the direction of the arrow on the tap until either the vat is coming from... form is empty or the vat is filling up to its full. Divide up the juice so that the two tanks on the left are full exactly to the red line marks. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think I get it. Let's do this. Wait. I have a feeling that perhaps... That's a relief. I wasn't entirely sure. Honestly, I kept quiet there because I thought it was going to be way more difficult. No, it's surprisingly simple. You did it. What a relief. The juice is where it needs to be and all is right in the world. Oh, top drawer. I did it. Well, Ernest, that was very impressive. Anyone would think you are vying for my position as chief detective. Oh no, miss, never. I'm quite content as your sister. More than con more than quite content, very content, extremely content. You're pushing it, Ernest. Let's speak to you. Um, excuse me. You would have to be Madame Dublé, would you? Indeed, I would. And you are? 
I'm Catriel Layton from the Layton Detective Agency. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Madame. Ah, the Layton Detective Agency, you say? Now, where have I heard the name before? Ah, you must be the famous Herschel Layton's daughter, are you? Why? I keep forgetting pro the Professor Layton acting as the first name. Herschel, Jesus. How is the professor? Is he in good health? I think so. You think so? Um, well, no, I mean, he's very, he's very well, yes, thank you. I'll be sure, oh dear, low better, that's not good. I'll be sure to mention to, to him that I met you. Yes, please do. Tell him I should very much like to meet when he's next available. I, I wish I could. Goodness, isn't it the time for the show? I promised myself a little tip, tip before it begins, to excuse me. Well done, Miss Layton. I think you made an impression. Hey, I don't know, Ernest. All this hobnobbing with a rich and famous second stole my nerves. Oh, I don't believe it. Over there, look, it's, it's Maverick the Erector. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Maverick the Erector. Thank you all for coming to see the premiere of my new film. I hope you enjoy a naval advance. No sub for love. The screen is about to begin, so if you all like to make your way to your seats... Oh my giddy aunt, I can't believe it! It's the real Maverick Director, Miss Layton. I've never seen the real Maverick Director before! But you've seen the fake one? No, I didn't mean... Oh, there's no time for that. The film's about to start. We must take our seats. Aren't you forgetting something, Ernest? First, I have to redeem this coupon for my durian popcorn. Oh, and look! The kiosk attendant has returned, but whatever the film starts while we are waiting for it. Uh, don't film, no don't film normally have like a 15 minute commercial introducing other films and stuff like that in the beginning before the film starts? Or is that only something here in Brazil? I honestly don't know. Everyone else is already inside. Quickly, miss, we must hurry. But the popcorn. Oh, I'll get it then. Ah oh, yes, yeah, sorry for the wait, man. We have a full house tonight, and with all the VIP guests in my attention, ha, huh? it's been quite busy, I'm afraid. I see. Well, anyway, I believe this coupon entitles me to some free popcorn. The durian flavor? Ah oh, yes, that's correct, man. However, the feature is about to begin, I think. So ha, huh? yes, please take your seats in minute. I'm sorry, miss, but we really must go in. I'm sorry, miss, but we really must go in. Mm. Okay, well, that's just being mean.